Hey, it's Kieran here at the beginning of the episode with the good Mike, and the episode you're about to hear is an episode where we kind of just uh, talk and unload about a lot of the stuff that's been happening uh, lately, naturally enough. Maybe it not be super coherent. Sorry about that. We also had to take a break uh, in the middle to kind of, um, yeah, take a breather because... The whole situation is overwhelming. Uh, at the beginning of this episode, though, I did want to really relay a message that was uh, uh, shared by uh, 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 Sopa Japridze. Um She is a, a labor union leader, host of the Reimagining Soviet Georgia podcast. Um, she lives in, based in Tbilisi. Writes for Open Democracy and Jacobin Magazine and things like that. And she's relaying a message that she got from a Ukrainian friend about what we can do uh, in the West. So this is not assuming that you are Western or anything like that. You might be, you might not be, but let's go with it anyway. I think it would be worth saying this up front at the beginning of the episode. What can you do to help Ukraine? I see this question often in Western social media, and as someone who has just left Kiev, I would like to offer my thoughts. I just saw that the head of the WHO called to open up a humanitarian corridor for civilians to leave Kiev. A humanitarian corridor is when both fighting sides agree to allow citizens to leave the city safely along a designated route. It does not involve any military action, unlike a no-fly zone, and is an ordinary procedure in wars. The measure is extremely necessary in places like Kharkiv, Mariupol, and Volnovka, and many other Ukrainian cities and towns going through a humanitarian catastrophe at the moment. When people find it very difficult to leave the cities for safety due to the bombing, armed groups, and curfews, civilians are stuck in unsafe bomb shelters among the rubble of their houses, dying due to bombing, the cold, and running out of food and medicine. I see a lot of Westerners calling for various military, quote, solutions to the conflict, which would not only vastly increase the number of deaths in this conflict, but probably only lengthen it. It is not worth giving in to patriotic enthusiasm about Ukraine's chances for military victory. Currently, this perception strengthens the hands of Ukrainian nationalists who are virulently opposed to any negotiations with Russia and would prefer to fight to the end, no matter the civilian casualties and annihilation of the country. Measures like opening a no-fly zone would even result in a direct confrontation between Russia and NATO, which as everyone knows would be a nuclear one. Nor are sanctions particularly useful in saving lives, since the economic effects will only be felt over the coming months, which will not affect the bombing campaign in Ukraine over the next weeks and days. In this conflict, I would like to urge citizens of rich Western countries to call for the construction of humanitarian corridors in Ukraine to save civilian lives. A negotiated compromise to the end of the war would be the best solution, but unfortunately this currently seems very unlikely to succeed. The construction of humanitarian corridor is entirely possible, politically and militarily, essentially free, and would re- merely require pressure by Western nations on Ukraine and Russia to agree to allow this. Yeah, just thought I'd really th- relay that message before the beginning of the show. Yeah. Solidarity. 